Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Just checking in before I get started on a new crochet project. Ooh. Uh, I've been working on the same blanket for a few days now. I'll show you kind of what I'm working on. It's a little big and unwieldy. One of those things where I used to take it with me to work and stuff and now it's too big. Um, but it is a wool blanket. Let's see kind of what's going on here. It has four different textures. This is actually based from the Texture World blanket from Crochet Crowd. I think it's Texture World. I'll put a link in the description. Um, it's one of their uh, stripy blanket patterns where they do like four different textures. So you can see that texture, this is an alternating uh, single crochet and treble crochet in um, American terms. Uh, this one is popcorn stitches, and these are massive popcorns. Some of them I made more ordinary sized, just so they were slightly less knobbly, but that's, that's a massive popcorn. Um, and they actually have extra definition by the way you do the row after them. Um, and then we have kind of a chevron pattern and a variation on basket weave that um, is just strips of raised texture as opposed to changing it so it's you know, a grid. Um, so this is what I've been working on for days, like days and days. Um, off and on and just like with a book after a while you need a break um, so I'm going to be jumping onto something else for a little bit what I'm going to be jumping into I'm going to put a link in the description of that as well so that if you wanted to do um, the same project pattern you could because I'm going to be following along with a, um, a doily pattern from um, Just Vintage Crochet. Um, I love her channel. And um, she does a lot of really cool older stuff. Um, I've tried just working from old patterns and some of them, the terminology and I don't get along. Some of them, I don't really have the resources or I guess maybe the patience, I don't know, to figure out like what kind of yarn they're actually intending you to use if it's a yarn that's not existed for decades and uh, which is kind of important because if you use the wrong gauge of yarn it changes how some things line up so um, you know like a shell pattern where you have you know a certain number of double crochets all worked on the same um, chain um, sequence from the, the row before if you are doing that with a different bulk or a different weight of yarn, um, the number of double crochets it takes to fill in that arc is going to change. Um, so there's things like that where just changing your hook to a bigger hook doesn't change it enough. So like doily patterns when you want to alter them to make a rug, you alter more than just the kind of yarn and the kind of hook you're using. Um, so uh, there are patterns I've tried in the past where I, I got you know, like five rows, six rows in and realized, yeah, this isn't working very well. Um, I do work off of old patterns, but, um, but I really like seeing the, the patterns that just Vintage Crochet focuses in on. I should remember her name. Uh, certainly I will eventually remember her name. Um, and a lot of the other people I know that crochet locally uh, just happen to watch her channel as well, so she's doing really well. Um, one of the things I really like on that channel, if you're into crochet and are kind of a nerd about it, she has this really fun game. It's the, the mystery pattern game. I don't remember if she has a particular title for it. She probably does. Eh. Um, where she, she had her son um, like make copies of vintage patterns initially from just one 
set of old patterns from the 1800s, from the 1840s or something like that. Um, and he blacked out on the, the copy anything that would tell you what the pattern is. So if it's a hat, anything where it refers to it as a hat would be blacked out. And the title is blacked out and the picture is blacked out. So then all those patterns are numbered and she draws a number and that's the pattern she's going to do. And she has to do the pattern from just the instructions and try to get it right so that it matches what the picture and the, the title say when she uncovers those. Um, so it's pretty cool. Some of them turn out really good. I did follow along for a couple of them, but then I got distracted. Um, she had one video for an Edwardian um, uh, shawl that I did, and actually that was one of the things I put in this, the state or the the county fair this last year. Um, it was a really cool pattern. I'm gonna do it again. Um, I was skeptical because it looked so roughly, um, because it looked so roughly because it's actually two circles, not just one. So you think like um, a poodle skirt, how you cut it out, it's just a circle with a hole in the middle. Um, so layer another one of those on top and then make it continuous. Um, so it makes it super warm and the drape is amazing on it. Um, I gave it to my housemate and she loves it. Um, definitely not something people make right now. Um, but I will make another one. That video came out when I was not so keen on one of the mystery patterns and I lost my habit of following along and I haven't really gotten in back into it. But um, I pulled up a elegant 1880s antique crochet pattern um, that looks really cool. It's a square, either a motif or a doily. Um, motifs just, they're like patterns that you're going to stick the things together to make, a, you know, think granny square blanket. And if you just do one and then make fancy edges around it and you do it in something that works as a doily or a table mat or whatever size you're working, um, then it goes from being a motif to being a doily or whatever else you made. Um, so I'm going to be working in thread. Um, I will have to watch the video to see if it's two-tone or three-tone or what. If it's three-tone, I'm still just going to do two-tone um, because I only pulled two colors of thread um, from my stash. This one is called Light Ash. This is one of the Hobby Lobby yarns, the Artiste. Uh, acrylic cotton thread. So light ash. It's a light kind of bluish greenish gray. Um, really nice. And then uh, for my other color, I'm, it looks like it's got a flower in the middle. So this will be the flower. So I'll probably start with this color. And then it looks like it changes colors outside the flower. So I'll just alternate between the, the gray and this one. This one is called uh, Masquerade, also in the Artiste. Um, this one's a uh, multicolor, so it should make for an interesting uh, doily. It's a square motif, <clears throat> so if I like it, I'll make a couple more because they work really well for putting under breakables on a shelf. Uh, I do need more doilies. That is actually not a frivolous project. I need them. Um, I have a lot of breakables, and now that I've moved into a place with spaces where I can display them, um, I need things to put the breakables on so that the like, the edges, again, the bottoms of, I think, mugs or bowls or things, there's that kind of rough pottery edge. Over time, that can kind of settle into the surface it's sitting on if it's a softer wood or especially if it's been varnished or painted. Um, so putting something like a doily between that um, bottom of the thing and the surface it's sitting on protects both. Um, so I will be doing that tonight and I will be listening to an audiobook. Um, <clears throat> either I will be listening to A Darkness at Sethanon by Raymond E. Feist. I think I have 
access to the audiobook for that. If I don't, if I have to read that one in print, I will be moving on to the audiobook of North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. I'm going to try it again. I think I made it through 10%. So I might start it there and see if I remember what happened. And partly, I, I, I second guess whether I remember what happened, and then I go back and start it over, and then I'm bored because I kind of know what happened. So one of these times, I need to just keep going, and if it's a little fuzzy, I'll catch on. Oh my goodness. I've been doing that with a murder mystery, too. Um, Hamlet Revenge, which just showed up in several of my TBR videos. I just pulled the bookmark out of it tonight, and I, I skimmed through the chapter and a half that theoretically I've read. I don't remember it at all. Um, I think I would start to remember over time, but it didn't really stick. So that one is actually going to go back in my TBR for future without a bookmark, and I will start it over. <clears throat> so it is officially not DNF'd, <clears throat> postponed, um, because is just not sticking right now. I'm also reading Dreamcatcher by Stephen King tonight, um, but I can't crochet and read a big hulking physical book at the same time. I also did pull <clears throat> two new audiobooks, and I'll check out the third one when I finish the first two from my local library. Um, Hilary Mantel's Bring Up the Bodies and Wolf Hall, um, and then there's the a third book in that series um, that I don't remember the name of, but our library surprisingly has all three as audiobooks that I can access just by checking them out online. Um, so that's amazing. I was watching a Steve Donahue video. Um, my algorithm this evening, okay, I've, I watch those videos with the, the folks show up at yards that are really a mess and they clean them up and it's great. Uh, mostly tool envy. I really want their yard tools, some of them. Um, although I don't like gas-powered yard tools, and I can't do a pull start with my arms the way they are. Um, so there's a caveat. I don't want all their yard tools. But, oh my goodness, string trimmers? Yeah. So mostly I'm just watching them, like, I want their string trimmers. I want to do that. That looks like so much fun. And I want their pole saws. That's the other thing that, that I will be getting sometime this next year, hopefully. Um, yeah, so I've been watching a lot of those. You would think that the um, YouTube algorithm would start showing me lots more of those. But for some reason today, it's been showing me lots of two to five year old Steve Donahue videos. I do watch his videos. I even interact with his videos. We read a lot of similar books and have similar reactions to some of those books. So I definitely watch his videos. Um, but it's weird, why, why old videos by that booktuber in particular? I've watched eh, maybe 20 different booktubers in the last seven days? Eh, I don't know. So it's been weird. But um, I, I played along and watched a couple of the, the old videos. And in one of them, he was talking about um, Hilary Mantel's um, Wolf Hall in particular. Um, and it sounds actually like something I might like. Um, so I looked them up, and, and the library has them. So um, I don't get to listen to them until I finish five more books, though. Because uh, remember, I'm still doing that read what you own variation. Um, so I have to finish 20 books in December before I can add more books that I didn't already own when this challenge started. Um, yeah, so I've finished 15, actually, in December. So if I finish some of these other ones that I've already started, then I should be starting Hilary Mantel maybe by Christmas. Um, but they are on lists. I don't remember if, I think it's just bring up the bodies that's on the, the box sells 1001 books you must read before you die list. Um, but they are on lists. And one of my exceptions for my read what you own challenge has been the 1001 books you must read before you die list books 
Um, I'm in so many different groups because I've been in several groups on Goodreads for that for quite a few years before I even thought about having a booktube channel. So my sort of obligations to participate in those groups very strongly predate any games I'm doing in booktube. So if I'm going to have a category of books that are an exception, that would be it. Um, I haven't decided yet, though. I'm going to try and play along and, and finish five more books before I start Hillary Mantel. We'll see. Um, so anyway, that's what I'm up to tonight. I will be starting my doily uh, while I let my video that you are now enjoying or watching anyway. Um, so I'm going to be starting the, the, this project while my video is uploading. And then I'm going to load in a whole queue of landscaping videos. Um, so that when I take breaks from the audiobook and the crochet, the way I've been doing um, reading sprints, since I can't always find live reading sprints, those, those keep you accountable. Um, a lot of people I've talked to are like, why would you do that? And they, you don't know these people. You're just what you you sit in, at, near your screen and, and you read while they're reading and then you stop and talk with total strangers about whatever and then start over again like yeah that's exactly what we do um but it keeps you accountable and kind of paces things out so that you know there's a, a moment when you're supposed to put the book down and a moment when you're supposed to put the pick the book up and then stuff in between um so it just gives you some structure. But failing that, and if I don't feel lame enough to watch reruns of people's um, live reading sprints, <laughs> I'm not the only one who does that, actually. A lot of people are in weird time zones. Um, that's how they participate at all. Um, but um, I put on a queue of landscaping videos, and every time the video changes, I change a book. Um, so um, that kind of paces out my reading, and so I have to get to the end of that video before I can move on to something else. Um, that kind of works, because I don't need to watch literally every second of every landscaping video. There's always the boring parts. I don't actually like riding mowers as much. They're not nearly as um, tantalizing for me as the, the string trimmers. I don't really want a riding mower. I think so. that's what it comes down to. I don't want a riding mower. I don't even really want a push mower. I want a really good string trimmer. What I want, okay, if there's any uh, tool designers watching this, yeah, right. But what I really want is, you know, the, the gas-powered string trimmers, they don't have all the, the guards on the end, so you can actually see the, the spool head. And they're just a stick with the spool head on one end and the motor on the other and that's it it's super super basic for some reason in the electrics they keep making them complicated and i know they have to run the cord safely down the inside of the the shaft of the stick um, and there are some tricks to that but there would be for the gas powered one too um, so i want one that's super super basic and the more basic it is, the more lightweight it can be. Um, the advantage to electric should be that you don't have to have the whole tank full of gas that's riding somewhere around your shoulder or wherever you're holding the tool um, because you know, you're not using gas power, you're using an electric battery. If the batteries improve so they're lighter weight, then your weight improves even more. Uh, and the way it actually works is um, the last string trimmer I used, a really nice one, about two years old that my mom got, um, Ryobi? I think it's Ryobi. Um, it's lovely. It's a great tool um, and super powerful and took care of weeds that my previous string trimmer couldn't even begin to deal with. It would just give them a light massage. Um, but hers, uh, yeah, it took care of all, all those weeds. But man, your arms hurt after you've used it. The vibration on it is horrible. The weight is ridiculous. It's supposed to be lightweight. 
for an electric trimmer and it is totally not so <laughs> yeah anyway total aside not books or crochet but just saying I want a basic really functional electric string trimmer and if it happens to be one that's easy to swap out between string and the little cutting blades that would be even better it shouldn't be that hard it's just they keep making them complicated anyway so that's what i'll be doing tonight probably mostly crochet and audiobooks um, because i do also still have to finish this blanket it's supposed to be a christmas present christmas is in four days um three days sort of um so and i think the person that it's for is gonna be here christmas eve so i will be doing the blanket i just need a break so i will definitely be doing audiobooks for a while um i've seen a few booktubers be like oh audiobooks you know i don't do those um it's not like it's really reading and yeah you know, i'm not gonna get into that debate um there's a lot of ableist um counter arguments to that all right yeah um it, it is ableist to say things like that um in most contexts i'll i'll put it that far um but if you are crocheting a blanket and you don't have a third hand to hold the book with um then audiobooks are the way to go anyway all right, uh, I'm going to stop rambling, let you guys get on to whatever else it is that you're going to do, uh, if you're still watching. Um, <laughs> yeah, this got rambly. Oh my gosh. Sorry about that. Um, check out the next video. I should have something done on this crochet project. I'll show you what I finished. Um, and I should have some finished books to chat about then, too. Um, if nothing else, I can gush about the Raymond E. Feist um, Magician Quartet because um, I really, really like it. And I'm almost done with my reread of it for um, Remember December. So when I finish The Darkness at Seth and On, I will be done with the whole quartet and then we'll talk. Um, so I'll catch you guys soonish. Um, happy reading. Hope you guys are looking forward to a happy Christmas. Um, and if you don't celebrate Christmas, um, happy holidays. I don't know. Um, some of them already kind of started. Anyway, uh, I will catch you guys soon. Bye, guys.